Uh, then cutting to the front of the line because he's a friend to the block with special privileges. You got that right. Steve Peters says, hello, Matt and Dave. Uh, let's get the business out of the way first. I did relaunch the Sparky Cosmic Delinquent Kickstarter, and I followed your advice of lowballing the goal. It's $1,000 this time, and currently $201 shy of being funded. Uh, I also changed the log line that you roasted me about. Hey, I thought it was pretty good. It, it is. It's a very good log line. It's just uh, we, uh, Matt and I started riffing on it and ha having too much fun at your expense. We're guys, Steve. You, you, you know how that works, taking, taking the mickey out of somebody. So if you don't mind, can you give it another plug? Half angel, half devil Sparky has grown from a star child into a surly teenager with cosmic powers. What could go wrong? 50 plus pages, manga size. Include, includes signed and unsigned variant covers by and an eight page collaboration with Dave Sim. Ends November 21st at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And Matt can talk about the PC Drew that's available as an add-on. And take it away, Matt. Uh, I, I ain't Kirby. <laughs> that's you did. I I I. Last time we talked about this, it was you know I was going to do some Bart Simpson riff because that was you know the the the, the line. And then it, it dawned on me when it was time to actually buckle down and put ink to paper that. Bart Simpson meets the Silver Surfer is a great pitch, but Silver Surfer is the angle to to work on. And I found a Kirby penciled sketch of the Surfer that I, I know I know the one very well. I know I, the one very well. And and you know because I did you know Jack Kirby Silver Surfer pencils, and there were a couple different options. And I found this one. I'm like, this is perfect. I'll just you know ink it and make it into Sparky, and. That way, I can brag that I've you know collaborated with Jack Kirby, to which people go, "No, you didn't." Well, technically, it's penciled by Jack, right. inked by me. You know, yes, there's a forty year difference between pencils and inks, but you know, it still counts. It's it happens. It happens. I mean, I've seen other artists. Uh, Eric Larson was one that just did it. He had a gallery on Facebook of. He's got a bunch of pieces that he found of Jack's pencils that he then went and inked, you know, and people are like, well, how do you do that? And he's like, well, it's real easy to find, you know, pencils, and then you just scan it and then print it as a blue line and ink it. And, you know, it, it's not uncommon. It's just, you know, who'd have the balls to try it? <laughs> I got to say, sitting here and looking at it, even even in fax form, uh, it's like I'm going, Grandpa, you're up to your eyeballs in work and, and you keep doing, doing other things, but I'm sitting there going, I want to do that. I want to take so that silver surfer pencils and turn it into, uh, Sparky. And I'm sitting there going, do I want to do Joe Sinnott inking or do I want to do like Royer inking? Or do I want to do uh, uh, Joe Simon inking from the 1940s with all the spinach on it? And it's like, Grandpa, you're not doing this. And I'm going, but if I did it, maybe that would get uh, that would get Steve Peters the, the $201 that he's missing. Is he still missing $201? Uh, yeah, I just checked. He's he's at seven hundred and ninety nine dollars right pledged out of the thousand he's looking for. But to be fair, this hasn't gone live yet, and I'm sure he's going to get the please hold bump where people that only pay attention to us once a month are going to go, oh hey, that looks kind of neat. Uh, how, how about how, how about this? It's like I I know the. Uh like I say, I know the Silver Surfer piece. I think I've got it in one of the Jack Kirby Collector uh, books. Where did you find Did you just find it online? Or? Yeah, I just found it online, but 
I do have the original saved, and I technically can put it back into the uh, Photoshop knockoff I have and make it into a blue line and send it to Studio Comics and have them print it out. Yeah, do that. Do that, and then it's... Uh, um, however, however much... No, don't do that. You're going you're gonna to be getting yourself into, up to your eyeballs again. How about... I'm willing to do uh, the head and and the horns and the wings and the arm out the front. And that's all you're going to get. But uh, I, I will be doing my best. I think I, I would try and do uh, Joe Sinnott on it. Well, I, I shared it after I got done with it. I shared it on the blog and somebody commented of, uh, Manly Matt Dow ranks below Dan Atkins, but above Vinny Coletta. And I'm going, that's just cruel. Oh, oh, that's pain. Oh, cruel. <laughs> and, cruel. I mean, I'm laughing going, I understand that the fandom and Vinny are not the best of friends, but that's just mean. <laughs> that's just mean. And Vince Coletta did a lot of good inking on Jack Kirby. I can... I can vouch for the fact that uh, uh, in the Heritage Auction catalogs, because uh, Kirby's pages are going for so much money that uh, uh, there's, such a, there's such a range of the inkers, and there's no question about it. Uh, Vince Coletta would mail it in from time to time, just uh, you know, sit down and erase stuff that he didn't want to ink. Uh, but if, if he was feeling it and went, yeah, what the heck, uh, I'll, I'll put in the time on this one, he would, he would do a hell of a job. And uh, I don't want that taken away from him. Uh, another guy that uh, I think is, is always low-balled, who I think was a great Jack Kirby anchor, was, uh, was Sid Shores. Because, uh, like I say, when I get the Heritage Auction catalog in, there's usually at least five or six Kirby pages in the catalog. And it's uh, Joe Sinnott. I, I don't think you can beat, you can beat Joe Sinnott, but uh, there, there's a lot of guys that uh, um, that, that do the job. Uh, Steve Peter goes on, uh, okay, on to the bad news. I hate to be the bearer of bad tidings. Around the end of last year, into the new year, I asked Matt, a few times if you guys had discussed Joe Matt's passing because I figured Dave would have a lot to say and I was wondering if I just missed it somehow. Uh, in the last please hold, Dave seemed to mention Joe in the present tense so I guess he didn't know. No, I did uh, I did know um, uh, and you said I shared the post with your remembrance of Joe uh, from when you found out October 1st, 2023. Uh, Steve continues, uh, Dave, in case uh, you aren't aware, Joe passed away of a heart attack at his drawing board on September 18th, 2023, uh, year to the day before the Heritage Auction for the Sparky Bus Art ended. Uh, wonder what the comic art metaphysics in that is. Uh, your guess is as good as mine. Of course, many people noted the irony of him passing at, at his drawing board as he hadn't put out a comic in, uh, in many years. Uh, he did do a fair amount of color commissions, which he would post photos of on his uh, Facebook page. Well, that's good. That's, that, was, that was getting work done. Um, Joe uh, was always in the situation when I knew him of... However, I, he had gotten an inheritance of some kind, and um, he put it all in the bank and basically lived his life around what uh, the interest was, uh, which was, wasn't huge, but it wasn't uh, non-existent either, but it was definitely, if you want to know one of the reasons that, uh, that Joe was cheap, that was it. This is how much money I have to live on. This is how much I'm spending. Uh, anything else that I can get that I don't have to pay for. Big thumbs up from, from Joe on that one. Uh, Fantagraphics published a final issue of Peep Show number 15 in July. 
Uh, the few comments about it I saw on Facebook were of disappointment in it, of the lack of closure because he left his comic works comics work unfinished. But I quite liked it. Um, it's a series of short pieces. Some, I think, were published elsewhere uh, that showed his life after leaving Canada, uh, an encapsulation of his love life up to that point. Uh, and there's a short piece that he must have left unfinished because it was inked by Chester Brown, an oddity and a treat to be old. Uh, and he drew the story of his going away party when he moved back to the States. And Seth roasted it. I'm assuming in an, in an affectionate way, uh, Joe seemed to love it. Uh, this send off to me seemed to double as a good goodbye for us, the readers. Uh, Dave, I can see if I can get you a copy if you haven't read it. Um, yeah, that, that would be, that would be fine. That would be nice. It's, it's, uh, uh definitely came to a parting of the ways with, uh, uh Joe and, and Seth and Chester, when uh, uh, I, did, I got Margaret to do the uh, I Don't Believe Dave Sim is a Misogynist online petition, and uh, uh, that was one of those, any kind of public appearance that I did, um, okay, uh, in, in order for me to be reassured that I'm okay with you, even though I'm not okay with anybody else in the comic book field, uh, please sign the petition. And uh, uh, they wanted me to judge the Doug Wright Award. And I basically told Chester, uh, I'll be glad to do it. Um, just say, uh, I would need to have you and Seth sign the petition. And immediately came back, absolutely no way, not signing the petition. And it's like, Okay, I didn't know that this was who I was hanging around with, people who think that I'm a misogynist. So, uh, you know, big mistake on my part. Uh, sincere apologies. Goodbye. Uh, I'm not going to be uh, seeing you guys anymore. Uh, I can't really claim Joe and I were friends. We corresponded in the 1990s, and I had him over once, as seen in my Me versus Dave Sim story. We were connected on Facebook and would chat every now and then, sometimes for a surprisingly long time. Uh, not too long before he passed, he commented on how productive I've been comics-wise. Yes, never let anybody take that away from you, Steve Peters, for uh, an indie comics guy, uh, new wave guy, ground level guy, whatever you're gonna describe yourself. You're very, very productive compared to 90% of the people. I told him I'd be productive for the both of us, and he liked that. Uh, he never once liked any of my comics posts on Facebook. Uh, likes are like currency, affecting the algorithm and making one more visible, especially if they're coming from someone well-known. Uh, but he never failed to like pictures of my cat, who incidentally passed away a couple of weeks ago. Uh, condolences on, uh, on the death of your cat, Steve. Uh, Steve's Kickstarter is in the description of the audio and on the screen of the video and linked somewhere around here. So there you go, Steve. I hope, uh, I hope we get, uh, we get another, uh, 200, $201. Um, uh, the first, the first person who, uh, who, who gets, uh, gets us up over the uh, over Steve's 1,000, uh, that'll be the person that, uh, that I do the uh, uh, Jack Kirby, Sparky, uh, Ed, and Arm for. How's that for you? Um, and I should mention that my piece, Steve, I, I asked Steve if he wanted to sell it, and he was like, okay, how much? And I'm like, I have no idea, Steve, it's your Kickstarter. He decided on $50 for the original art with a... Special message on the back, written to the winner by me, possibly with something drawn. I have no idea. I, I suggested it as a thinking about how uh, Neil Gaiman once auctioned off the coat he wore when he wrote Sandman, and th the deal was is you got the coat, which okay, you know it's a leather coat, but he wrote a special message in the coat for whoever 
won it, and they're the only person that knows what he wrote type thing. And I'm going, well, that's a neat idea. I, I'm not Neil Gaiman, and it's not a coat, but, you know, I can put something on the back that if you frame it and hang it on the wall, no one will know what it says but you. That's true. That's true. I'll, and, see, if I, I can, I'll see if I can do something like that myself. I'll, I'll have something printed on the back so that you will get... Uh, no, then, then they got to decide whether they, they want the one side or the other. Well, no, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> That's all. 